Hey, what's up, witches? It's Luna here with an unboxing for you, and I apologize for the frightening state of my hair, but my son was using our blow dryer yesterday, and it melted, like literally. You know the little box at the plug that has the reset buttons and the breaker? It's supposed to be a breaker? Well, the breaker didn't break, and it got so hot when he pulled it out of the outlet, one of the prongs just went, and the plastic was completely melted. So here I am. But I mean, that's more frightening than the state of my hair. So here I am. Today's unboxing is part one of a two-parter. And um, the deck is the Universal Tarot by Los Garbeo. And the two-parter is that there's another deck called the Transparent Universal Tarot, um, which is the same artwork, but a, a very different way of going about it. So this is part one. I will link part two down below and I will link this one in the other video and all that like that there okay so here's the box typical tuck box with the little scarab okay <clears throat> the esoteric indications by the great English occultist reinterpreted by the master painter Roberto De Angelis 22 major arcana 56 minor arcana with divinatory instructions uh, and the same thing, the esoteric indications by the great English, blah, blah, blah. 22 major arcana, 56 minors, and the Los Garbeo imprint on the bottom with all the different flags. This is listed here at $23.95. I purchased it from a used book site, and it was tagged as used, but there was shrink wrap on the deck inside and shrink wrap outside. So I don't know whether, you know, it's like somebody bought inventory from a closeout and so it's considered used, but I got it including shipping under $18 and that was from Abe Books. I like buying used decks. So plastic has been removed. <clears throat> Here are the backs. Very cool. We have the LWB, and we have the face cards, facing cards that I call them. Um, this is the for the deck, and is there only one? No, usually this is what Los Garbea does. They have one for the deck, and then they have one that just uh, advertises Los Garbea. I'm going to be drinking a lot of water today. My allergies are bad, and my my mouth has been very dry because of it for some reason. <clears throat> now I have, oh, I'm noticing that Ace of Cups is the first one up here. What I've done is I have my um, Waitsmith pack. And I'd like to kind of do a side-by-side -side just to see how close they are. And then we maybe don't need all the commentary. So this can be a slightly briefer But I do find it informative to see how similar they are, and they're very similar. This is a little more contrasty. This has got some more kind of subtlety in the shading here uh, compared to this. The hand actually has some color to it. But then we have lotus leaves down here, but no lotus flowers. Still, uh, aside from that, the imagery is the same in both. And the same thing here, the costuming has changed, but, and we've got a background here that kind of looks Greekish, <clears throat> statuary. We've got the foot of a statue there. And of course, I, that makes me want to go here. Um, in the book, we have history of Tarot's, T-A-R-O-T-S, from 1442 and it goes and goes and goes and then we have um, Ed, Arthur Edward Waite and Oswald, Oswald Worth and Aleister Crowley and then the Italian master illustrator Roberto De Angelis was inspired by the iconography described in A.E. Waite's works while recreating the same symbolic immediacy of the Tarot's <laughs> by Pamela Coleman Smith in a modern style. It reminds me of like Raman's you know, saying ramens instead of ramen. I used to drive my 
teenagers insane. I'd say, you want some ramens? It's ramen, mom. And so, of course, I had to keep doing it as ramens. Um, all right. So, knowing the meaning of a card is not enough for reading the tarot. We must attune to the image. And there's a thing on Arthur Edward Waite. Um, the search for the end. It's been shuffled and cut. Layout nine cards shown in the figure. So there's a f figure. Yes. So as with Los Garabeo, they on the very facing page of the book, they show a layout. And then here, uh, it's called the search for the end. Here they describe that layout. Let's go to, I just want to see how much they mention. Um, what's in the imagery. So this is the two. It just says passion, couple, idol, I-D-Y-L-L, -L, idyll, and a toast. That's it. Okay. Let's continue. So we just see some stylistic differences, but we don't see um, imagery differences. This, you know, we've got all the abundance down here, but they're here we've got the grapes overhead. So I'm not seeing anything missing. And since they're talking about intuitive, uh, of course, if you see things that aren't in the Wade Smith deck, it gives you something additional to kind of grasp onto. There is a little slightly more realistic style, or maybe more of an anime or a manga kind of style, I want to say, with the outlines. It's certainly more dimensional than the Wade Smith, and the colors are more blended and subtle than this, where it's just basically this blue, this yellow, you know. There's the five. <clears throat> the children, even the red hood is there. I do find these images very pleasing. They're very familiar, but they're fresh. I mean, the happy guy even kind of looks like this happy guy. We've reversed the sides things are on, but the page, the knight. And now we have the queen facing the other way. That's interesting. When I read, I do look at direction a lot. I will lay things out. Usually I lay cards out in sets of threes and I will see who's looking at whom, what, you know, which way things are facing and moving and looking. <clears throat> so that is a departure. Some could say, you know, the Queen of Cups looking to our left is talking about the, the feminine side, the subconscious side, um, and that reverses here. Her robe or her mantle is a very different style. We do have water all around her and a cliff in the background. And look at the king. So here he's just kind of, you know, meh. This guy's got some serious dynamism about him. He's holding the same things in the same hands as this king, but look at his bare feet. Oh, and you know, the throne's kind of the same. We have a creature leaping out of the water and a ship. But I love the shell-like design and the seahorse heads. And I especially like, you've got the fish around his neck, especially like just that lean forward. Very dynamic. Oh, well, okay. I got those. Let's go to... I kind of like the side-by-side. -side. I, I will try not to comment as much because that takes up a lot of your time. Alright. Let's do... I'm just going to pull these apart now in case the order goes funky. All right. Here we go. So again, much more color, much more dimension to them, a lot less flat looking. This looks like a real sky, real-ish sky. This is practically, oh, oh, big difference here. When this card comes up in a reading for me, I will talk about um, weighing and balancing and a juggling of resources that we're, we're making decisions about resources and we're, we're juggling things around. And 
the rocky emotions that go with that. So it's kind of a, a conversation starter about our emotional attachment to money and the emotional upheaval that is caused when we have to, you know, eke things out or we have to restructure or rebalance our financial situation. This has a town in the back with some big towered buildings. And that makes me think of solidity, that we've got funds to play with, that there's a solid foundation there. Totally different meaning. Very interesting. So if you wonder why you would have more than one, you know, Waite Smith style deck, this is why. They each have particular things that are idiosyncratic to just them. And now we have a reversal of the sides again. He's working on this statue and they're kind of observing. Here we've got sort of a monk and a somebody else with this big long hood. Here it's like a priest and a bishop observing. So there's a different nuance there too. This guy's a lot grumpier and look at the big bag he's got sitting here. Storm clouds in the background. Yeah, that's pretty true to form. We've switched sides again. I'm not sure why. It's just, you know, I guess to, to freshen up your brain and the image that it's seeing, and that is a very valuable thing. Switcheroo again. I just like the the softness, the expression. There's more expression in these faces than in the Waitsmith deck. And we've reversed things again. But everything else remains the same. Here's the page. That doesn't look like a young person. <laughs> it looks like a young person that needs a milkshake. And then we have the knight standing still. The queens, she's more facing head on this time, not obviously pregnant. And there's the king. Interesting. Very interesting differences. Okay, wands. Hmm, so appealing. Same, you know, same staffs and symbols. And then, this is pretty much going the same way now. We see ships coming in here, or ships going out, depending on how, you've, how you learn it and look at it. But here, and here it looks like, and he's standing on a rocky thing. Here he's standing behind a wall with his foot on a rock or something that almost looks like a, a, an artifact or a ruin. There are no ships. <clears throat> Four of Wands. The Five. Again, it's more dynamic. I see more movement there. It's not as static looking. These almost look like they're posed. You know, these guys look like they're actually in motion. We have the six, the seven, and look at him as a knight. I mean, we've got this kind of pagey looking guy, no armor or anything. This guy's in full armor, so that brings a little oomph to standing your ground. These are nearly identical. The nine. Um, setting boundaries, wounded in battle. Now this guy clearly has bandages on, this guy doesn't. And there's a little wall, I mean, he's standing, is that a wall? I don't know. But less of a wounded in battle and more of a protecting your property kind of thing. Much more emphasis on the hill in the background. Here's the page, boy, they're pages. Knaves, they're called in this deck, are much more mature than this deck. Facing the opposite direction, here comes the Knight of Wands. Very similar. Here's the Queen with her kitty cat. Oops. And the King with his little lizard. 
All right. The swords, and it's very strange that, you know, they start with the miners. <clears throat> That's a beefy sword. Much beefier. Oop. The two. The three with the addition of a person down here looking absolutely anguished. Just in case you didn't get the point of three swords piercing a heart. The four we're seeing from the feet up instead of from the side. The five doesn't have that. Well, he does have kind of a snarky look on his face. A six, again, going in a different direction. So if you do read directionally, this deck is going to take you different places. The seven. This guy's sneaking off this way. This guy's sneaking off this way. The eight. She looks like she's bound to a pillar. She stands on her own, so that makes a difference. Oh, dear. The sword's going that way. They're coming straight down on this person. She's losing her mind. And then we have the ten. And again, a kind of a reverse. This one's face down. This guy's face up. Interesting. Okay, there's the page. There's the knight. Rah! The queen. And who? look at him. Do not fuck with this guy. All right. Similar down to the costume. And she's got a purple gown on instead of blue and white. It's green and purple. Again, changes in style of clothing, but not in substance. Where's the Hierophant? The Lovers. Chariot. String. The Hermit. Much more real looking. Everything important is there on the wheel. There's justice. The hanged man, again changing the color palette. Death. I mean, even this, the stances and the positions that people are in are the same. many fewer changes in the majors, but look at him. I mean, he looks kind of grumpy. This guy looks straight up evil. And instead of his hand being up, which mimics the magician and it mimics justice, he's got both hands down here. Looks like he's ready to grab this woman's head. Wow. So we don't see the crown flying off at the top. We just see the top blasted apart. And we also don't have all of the yodes coming down, these little figures. Hmm. I mean, they're, they're there, but they're very small. Star. Moon. Again, more realistic looking than cartoony. Sun. and Develt. All right. Setting the uh, Rider Waite Smith aside, let's go for a test drive, shall we? Okay. Ooh. Well, there's my bell. I'm going to light up my candle. I'm going to fire up a charcoal. We're going to give it a quick How's your father? 
<laughs> and the charcoal puts out the candle as it has so many times before. And I also want to kind of apologize for my energy today. Right now, I am so sleepy, I almost can't keep my eyes open. <laughs> but plow through, we shall. All right. Let's do, um, I'm just going to put some sage right on the charcoal to get the blessing of air and fire. And the ocean water to get the blessing of water and earth and a bell to get the blessing of spirit. And then welcome to my guides and guardians, allies and ancestors. Thank you so much for being here. Please lend your attention to this deck if you will. I offer you fresh water and the fire of Azrael. All right. This is, of course, going to shuffle beautifully. <laughs> the deck is, I'm not. Yeah, the, the standard card stock, the cards that come in these little tuck boxes, all use a very standard stock that is made for shuffling. And I said it before, I will say it again. I love it. Try to do it this way so I don't blow the candle out. <laughs> I'm going to do three more shuffles because we want a thorough mix. Um, magicians and card people will tell you that seven shuffles is the most randomized a deck can be. It's also a very magical number. And they're just a joy to touch, so why wouldn't you? Right. So, our question, as always, for the collective, how do we, uh, where we are today, how do we move from a sense of just surviving and barely hanging on into a sense of thriving and abundance? How do we do this? Please give me three, of like three cards. How do we move from surviving into thriving this day, whenever you're watching this? Okay, they're telling me one more cut shuffle, and then we'll take them off the top. Okay, so just uh, straight off the rip without going to the book, how do we do this? <clears throat> we generate hope. We nurture hope. The star card here says we connect with spirit, we keep our psychic ears open, and we keep our wisdom heart open, and we find hope wherever we can. <clears throat> Several years ago, when I was uh, doing the Hogwarts program at our church, there was a, um, I came across a thing called Hope Punk. It was a hashtag. And it was about um, hoping against hope. That in order to keep hoping when all hope seems lost is like a radical act. It's a punk. It's a punk act. So that's hope punk is just to doggedly, determinedly continue to hope even when it seems like all hope is gone. So the star here says we go to spirit. <clears throat> we take we take our troubles. We sit with them. We feel them. We take take them to our spiritual self. You know, when I mean taking it to spirit, it's not like, you know, hand it off to God. It's not my problem anymore. It's tapping in to the spiritual infinite part of yourself, the wisdom mind and wisdom heart that is that still remembers that it's eternal and that it's part of the, the one. And you sit with your problem and open up so that that part of yourself can observe. And the handing off part sometimes means that 
you know, we're not getting answers when we're trying to wrestle them out of spirit. <laughs> and so sometimes when you sit down and you get in that meditative or prayerful place or ritual space and you let your problems be there, warts and all, in front of you, you acknowledge, yes, this is what's happening. You're here right now. I'm struggling with this and what to do with it. And I would like your help. Please, guides and guardians, allies and ancestors, gods and goddesses, I would like your help on this. I thank you for it now. I thank you for blessings received and blessings yet to come. Then you let it go. And that your subconscious mind and you know that deep well that is your right brain that accesses the um, collective unconscious, like the Akashic Records, says, okay, I've now been asked, I'm going to go do my work. And we'll find those answers and bring them to you. Then we have the Ten of Pentacles. So we're talking about materialism here. And one of the big problems that's causing a whole bunch of worry these days is inflation and the price of gas and our stuff and how can we afford our stuff and you know all that kind of stuff so on one hand this card is talking about balancing the spiritual with the material on the other hand it is saying that there is wealth all around you it's you need to acknowledge it and celebrate it and appreciate it and generate gratitude around that. The star can also talk about gratitude, but Ten of Pentacles is having enough and more than enough. So maybe doing a reframe on, <clears throat> instead of thinking about what you want and you don't have, looking at what you do have. And if you're feeling overwhelmed by the stuff that you do have, then you look at it and say, what do I have that I really do not need, that I no longer wish to carry? Which burden, material burdens am I carrying that I no longer wish to carry? And you can move that stuff along. Then we have judgment, and it says that the change comes from inside, that it's inevitable that we will go from this idea of lack into one of um, abundance. Okay, hold on one second. So death and rebirth is part of the judgment card. It's a card of resurrection, something coming back from the dead. So one of the things I'm looking at here is what of your material things that you might think are junk, what things could be maybe repurposed, upcycled, um, handed along to people that do need them, um, <clears throat> kind of resurrecting some of the things that we do have what is still useful and what isn't but then it's this really is talking about a reframe it says that the difference between surviving and thriving a whole lot of it has to do with your frame of mind how are you looking at it how are you describing this to yourself and the words that you use and the the mindset you have the feelings you generate around your circumstance has everything to do with whether you feel it being a hopeful situation or you feel it being a dire situation and you know dire situations are dire situations and you can still cling to hope in those situations and ask for help and I'm telling you one more we've got the seven of wands saying stand your ground stand your ground what you have hold you know or if you don't need it hand it along to somebody else that needs to have it I am gonna look at the book for a second <clears throat> pardon all right so the star in this book says and it calls it the stars no description of images whatsoever hope optimism farsightedness beauty grace gentleness bright ideas direction good omen ideal and motivation and then we have the Ten of Pentacles. Uh, let me see something. So bright ideas too. You know, when you generate hope and optimism, hope <coughs> opens up the future. Hope says if you're if you're just in hope and not, I hope this specific thing happens. Um, 
when you're hoping towards the future, it opens up possibilities for you to see. Um, so you can have bright ideas around things. If you're totally pessimistic about the future and you're terrified of it, you're not going to come up with too many bright ideas about it. Alright, what's this? Swords, wands, miners. Okay, yeah, the, it's so short. Here's this and this is the entire suit of cups. Ten of Pentacles, and they they do say uh, Chalice's suit, Elemental Affinity, Water Sphere of the Spirit. That's interesting. It's Sphere of the Emotions, and we don't have something ahead of the Majors saying that these are, you know, this is what makes them different. So, hmm. But each of the Miners have a have an explanation. Pentacles suit, Elemental Affinity, Earth, and the Sphere of Matter. And the Ten of Pentacles says, ease, home, family income, inheritance. But the Tens, you know, reading Rachel Pollack's book and listening to her talk about A.E. Waite's book, and, and if you've tried to read A.E. Waite's A Pictorial Guide to the Tarot, it's, it's dense. <laughs> the language is very archaic and very dense to get through, very esoteric, so it doesn't bring things down to a practical level. But... Um, Rachel Pollack talks about the tens in his view, in A.E. Waite's view, being like tipping over point, that the nines are the culminating point and the tens kind of tip over into excess. So that's where I came with the ten of pentacles being kind of materialism. And also the, all the people in this, the man and the woman are kind of facing each other, but nobody's interacting here. There's not the joy like on the Ten of Cups. But we have ease and home and that sense of security with the walls all around. All right. It's not changing my interpretation. The world, perfect, no, not the world, judgment. Test, fulfillment, consequences. News, announcement, desired transformation, culminating moment, moral awakening, searching of conscience. So there is that transformative idea, but the test and, and consequences, those are good. Those are good keywords. And then we have the seven of wands, which are called, yes, wands. All right. Worth, arguments, competition, struggle, challenge. challenge. So worth is an interesting. So then we have here talking about monetary worth versus personal worth. They're not the same thing. Worth, okay, arguments, competition, yes, struggle and challenge, but the worth part is, you know, I'm worth standing up for. I guess that, that goes along there. So yeah, great deck to read from, beautiful artwork. Uh, I will bring you the next video as soon as I can hold my flipping eyes open to shoot it. You guys, I'm like, my eyes are like crossing. <laughs> so I think I'm going to go take a nap and then I will shoot um, the next video, which is for the Transparent Universal Tarot. Very interesting deck. I will see you next time. Um, please hit that like and subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, but definitely hit the like button. If you have universal weight, um, let me know what you think about it, how much you like it, you know, the comparison of the decks. And um, if you would like to buy me a deck, my birthday's coming up at the beginning of August, there's an Amazon wish list below that you can pick me a deck and on my unboxing video, I will read for you personally. You can uh, send me a question or not and I'll read for you nonetheless. It's a great deal. All right, you guys, it's really great hanging out with you. I will see you next time. And until then, this is Luna. Blessed be.